tarray is a dynamic resizing array. Like most languages, it allocates a buffer behind the scenes on the heap. So if we inspect it, you can see internally there's an array num and an array max. Let's watch both of those values. Array max is the actual allocated number of elements, and array num is the elements that are actually occupying memory. So if we add one, we can see that the array num went to one and the array max went from zero to four. There's a function on the array called allocated size, which returns the bytes of the array max effectively. As you can see, array max is still four, the allocated size is 16, and that is because a int32 has the size of four. And there's four of those for array max, so we have 16. So if we continue adding to the array, we can see that the array num is going up, but the array max is still at four. So this means we haven't allocated more memory on the heap. Each time we add, we just use memory that is already allocated on the heap. However, if we add one more, we're gonna to go to the fifth element. And so we didn't have enough heap memory. So now we've got an array max of 22, and there's five elements in that 22 memory allocated. Now when we start removing, an interesting thing happens. If we remove one, we go down to four on array num. Move another, three. Remove another, we're down to two. And notice though that the array max isn't changing. But when we went to zero, when we removed all of them, the allocated size actually went to zero. That is, the array max went to zero. So adding and removing doesn't change the underlying allocated buffer in the same way. They happen at different values. So I've written a little loop here to log every time that we change values so we can see when does the buffer resize when I'm adding and when does the buffer resize when removing. So we're gonna add 100 elements. So we've got a for loop of 100 and the shrinking test, we're gonna add one. We can step over that. And so if, if our allocated size does not equal our previous allocated size, then what we're gonna do is update the previous allocated size and log it. So we did, we went from zero to four. And now I'm gonna let this run over all the way down here. So I'm gonna continue execution until this loop. Now, if we go down to our log, we can see that the allocated size changed at these intervals. So when we added element one, it went to having four as the array max. When we added the fifth element, it went to 22. When we added the 23rd element, we got a reallocation of up to 47 elements. When we hit the 48th one, we got 82. And so you can see, every time we run out of memory, we effectively allocate it again. So there goes 4, 22, 47, 82, 130. So now we have this test where we effectively just remove each element from the end of the array. So we're gonna loop while there's values in here, so that's 100. And then we're gonna remove that, the last index. So we move at the last index, and we'll see, you know, our previous allocated size was 520 bytes. Our new one is still 520, so we're not going to log that. But when it does change, we'll update the previous allocated size and log the changes. So I'm going to tell the debugger to run to this. So now if we look at our log, the buffer resizes are not the same as the adds. We only had two buffer resizes, and that's when we dropped down to element 65. We went from 130 down to 65. And then we didn't resize again until we got down to zero and we resized down to zero. Now you probably learned in computer science that resizing a buffer is relatively expensive because we're doing memory operations on the heap. So what we can do is when we remove at an element, there is an optional parameter that specifies to disallow shrinking. So by default is allowed, shrinking is true. Uh, it is the third argument, so we actually have to specify the number of elements we want to remove too. So that's slightly different than the previous API call we had made for remove. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do that same loop where we loop 100 times adding elements and logging the amount of times we change the buffer. So I'm going to run over the adds, continuing the execution. So now we can see we did buffer resizes at adding to 1, adding at 5, 23, 48, and 83. And these are the resulting buffer sizes after the add. And now for the remove, we're going to remove everything, but we're going to disallow shrinking, so we've set that to false. And I'm going to continue past that. And we can see that nothing logged here. So the buffer did not change, the underlying buffer. If we mouse over our array, we can see that it is empty. If we look into the raw view, we can see that the array max is still 130 with nothing in there. And so in this way, we are potentially having a performance optimization at the cost of hanging on to that memory when we don't necessarily need it. There is a function to determine how much slack you have left in that allocated array. So by slack, it means what is the difference between the amount of stuff we have allocated versus the stuff we're actually using? So right now, if we calculate the slack, it's 130 because we have used nothing. If we add three elements and then we get the slack, 
we can see the slack is 127. And that's because we have 130 elements allocated. So in a contiguous array of four up to 130 elements, but we've only used three. So 130 minus three is 127. So if you're wanting to be very hands-on with your memory allocation with your T-ray, there is a function called shrink. And shrink basically gets rid of the extra slack. So if we call shrink before we call it, we have 130 in the array max, call shrink. And now we have only three. There is a function called empty, which will empty the array. So we have three elements. If we call empty, we now have no elements and the array max is set to zero. So it deallocated our memory. There's a function called reserve, which allows you to reserve the memory up front for the number of elements you provide. And so I want to reserve memory for 100 elements. This means we're not going to be doing buffer resizing until we reach element 100. This allows you to be more hands-on with your underlying memory allocations, which could be a performance optimization. So if you know you're going to add 100 elements, just allocate the buffer up front to be 100 and add your elements after the fact. And you can do this at runtime, so you can do some calculation to figure out how many you're going to add, reserve that amount of memory, and then add the elements dynamically. If we reserve 100, if we look at the array max, you can see that array max has went to 100. We step over that. Next, what we'll do is we'll do our for loop again, where we loop 100 times and add an element. So if we step over that, you can see that our array has one element in it now, and the array num is 1, while the array max is still at 100. And again, if our allocated size changes, I'm going to log it. So what I'm going to do now is let the debugger continue until we get to this line to see if we have any memory allocations. We shouldn't because we reserved 100 and we're adding up to 100. So if I let the debugger run to here and we look at our log, we saw that there was no buffer reallocations. We didn't log any buffer resizes here, just the old messages from previously. And now what we're going to do is iterate over all of the elements in the array and remove them one by one from the end. Let's see what happens. I have a question for you. Do you think we'll do a buffer resize? Or because we reserved, will the buffer stay at 100? We are not calling the shrinking false one. We're just calling regular remove that. But our array now has a reserve at 100. So what do you think is going to happen? All right, so let's run the debugger. Now, would you look at that? We did have buffer contractions here. So we at element 35, we went down from 100 down to 35. And then at 0, we also went down to 0. So the important thing to note here is that even though you've reserved your space, your removals can still cause buffer deallocations. And so you really should, if you're calling reserve, do your remove ats or any sort of removes with the allow shrinking set to false if you don't want your memory to be reallocating behind the scenes. So all you would need to do is comment that out and comment this one in and just make sure allow shrinking is set to false.